let's see how things are coming along with the new wolf fighting game mechanics. We showed some uh, pretty goofy but uh, basically functional uh, gameplay a while ago, and we've been working on that now, so things are coming together, but it's very tricky to get all these elements working nicely together. Um, it's tricky with any kind of 3D game, but it's even harder, I think, with quadrupeds, especially quadrupeds that bite each other because you've just got such close physical interaction, contact. If we were making ostrich quest, it would be, I think, a fair bit easier. Especially since you want this to be dynamic action, not scripted or canned pairs of synced animations that always play the same together. You can attack at any time. Other wolves can attack at any time. You can be attacking a wolf while another wolf attacks you. Very dynamic, wild and crazy, as close as we can get to how real wolf fights can play out. So here we've got um, my mate. Whoop, which one? My mate there. And one stranger wolf, just to keep it simple for this testing and tuning. Let's let's try some fighting here and see how it looks. So let's see here if I can bite it. So there's the rear leg bite. That's just like the elk, really. So that one works pretty well. But we've got more complicated bites coming in here. So if I attack and I can bite, oh, he dodged it. Sometimes they'll dodge and get away. You can see when the uh, defending wolf reacts, it's turning his head a little too close into the body, into my body. I'm kind of coming at it pretty much right angle, but the way it turns in, um, that doesn't look very good with the head going here. There you go, right through my chest. Another odd thing here is that the, the four legs of my wolf are trying to stay on the ground, but sometimes um, they're getting pushed off and they look kind of odd, just uh, kind of stiff and straight poking down there. These bites won't normally last this long, so you won't see this repetition of the animations. I've just extended it just for testing in order to examine the body positions better. Oh, here's a nice one. Um, so you can see attacking the throat, this just, it basically works, but it looks a little weird. Whoa. Um, because of the way the throat on my wolf, it gets turned and twisted um, unrealistically. So functionally that works just great, but visually it's a little off um, and it needs to, it needs some tweaking. So we're going to solve these issues that we saw there in a couple ways. So first, we're looking at these uh, the bite points here on the shoulder. So shoulder right and shoulder left. Um, so that's where we had the defending wolf turn and resist and it put its head right into the body of the attacking wolf. So to, to fix that, we're going to do a couple things. First of all, we're actually going to move these two bite points, um, the shoulder bite points up and make them more like like uh, biting the neck from the side. So um, coming right at it and actually not from above so much because we need to get the attacking wolf a little lower so its feet are always touching the ground and aren't kind of stretched out trying to reach the ground um, and oddly, awkwardly stiff. So we're going to actually move these down close to the side of the neck because um, wolves really do go for the neck. Um, either they go for the... the underside of the neck where it's very vulnerable but that's hard to get to or they go for the side of the neck on the left and right so we're moving these two bite points forward um, these are also anchored to bones on the wolf rig um, and I'm going to adjust what bone that's attached to also so we were on this bone uh, farther back on the shoulders and I'm going to attach the shoulder bite points to this one this bone that's right up on the neck so it'll be a very close connection. So with that, as the defending wolf twists and turns, the motion from that body movement is transmitted to the attacking wolf. That's using the inverse kinematics or IK system that we've had much trouble with, and you, as you've seen in the bloopers that we've posted over the over the year. Um, and that's why you get that real sense of the struggle that the def defender is struggling and the attacker is is absorbing that motion. Um, and that's because these bite points are attached to actual bones on the wolf rig that is what's actually uh, running the animation. And then the ones that we had in the middle of the back actually going to move those up to become more like the shoulder bite points that we had before. So 
also moving those down a little bit, angled so the wolf's coming at it more from the side. So now we have these bite points on the shoulders. Again, they're the different bite points than we had before. Um, so we have these on the shoulders, on the neck really, they're really more like the, the neck or the scruff um, bite points now. And then these bite points on the back. And the throat was fine. The throat issues with the, the attacker's head twisting around, we're going to fix that in the animation by adjusting which way the defending wolf pulls away from the attacking wolf. Um, and now with these, with these bite points adjusted, we've got some new animations that have the attacking wolf, I mean the defending wolf, twisting around less. So we can look at those here. Let's see. So in the bite points farther back, we still have the defending wolf really turning around to to bite and try to reach the attacking wolf. But now for these kind of scruff or, or neck bite points, it doesn't it doesn't turn around as much because the wolf, the attacking wolf, is really holding it by the neck, and so it restricts its movement. So now we've applied those changes, and uh, so here biting the scruff or the neck that the the defending wolf is resisting, but not clipping into the body with its head. So that's definitely an improvement. Um, it's also a lower attack point. So the, f the front feet on my wolf uh, don't float up off the ground. What else we got here? Let's see. Can we do a neck? Can we do a throat attack? No, it got away. There. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's not so good. Got to fix that. Let's try try a different throat attack. There we go. Okay, so now we can see that looked better. That didn't twist the, the neck on my wolf around not nearly so much. I wonder if the head should turn the other way, actually. See, I can also control which way the head rotates, and that actually looked like rotating the bite point so the head turns the other way is going to be more more natural. Yeah, I think if the head rotates, the head on my wolf rotates 180 degrees around, so um, it's the top of the head is facing up. That's going to work much better now that we've adjusted the animation on that. Now look at that. My mate gets a chance to eat while I'm keeping the stranger busy. So there we go. See, that's exactly what we're going for. Biting a little lower on the shoulders and the resisting, uh, the, the struggle on the defending wolf just can't quite reach my body. So... This is one reason why games take so long to make. Not only designing and programming all the functionality, not only creating all the animal models and animations, but then bringing it all together, making uh, sure it's playable and making sure it's fun and making sure it looks realistic and naturalistic. We are still aiming to release Amethyst Mountain Episode 1 by the end of this year, 2018, as early access on Steam and Itch.io, so for Windows and Mac. As we keep on working on the game and uh, get Slough Creek done early next year and get the mobile versions as soon as we can in 2019.